Let's sing about self-control. Let's sing about how we live. The do and the don't, will or the won't, we take or give. Let's sing about self-control. Everything we do and say, inside there's a fight. Wrong from the right, a choice we make. We need a little help. 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 Help is on the way. Yeah, God's on our side. God's on our side. Helping us when we just don't know. Helping us when our self-control. Yeah, God's on our side. God's on our side. Helping us when we rise or fall. Helping us when our self-control. Let's sing about self-control. Let's sing about thoughts we keep. A heavenly mind is pure and kind and filled with peace. Let's sing about self-control. It's a gift from God above. We walk in the light, day or the night. We're filled with love. We need a little help. 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 Help is on the way. morning children and welcome to church today we are so happy to have you around 
and today we're looking at something exciting i'm very sure you will really love it and you will learn a lot from it and it's what is in you self-control if you notice we've been discussing the fruit of the spirit over a period of time and today we will be looking at self-control the story of joseph from the pit to the prison so we're looking at self-control and joseph as an example and how he moved from the pit to the prison this is actually part one there is also the part two of this that you mustn't miss so let's start before we start let's take our identity so are you ready are you really really ready so let's do it together i am wonderfully made i am fearfully made i know my identity i am a child of god i'm creative and full of ideas i'm not a slave to fear i'm bold i am a soldier in the lord's army i can do all things all things through christ who strengthens me amen man 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 that's so wonderful so what did we learn last week we learned something do you remember do you do you do you are you sure yes 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 that's true we learned about gentleness yes gentleness which is also a fruit of the spirit and jesus showed us an example of gentleness by forgiving the adulterous woman so how did you show gentleness in this past week yes did you forgive that your sibling that your sister that your brother or that your friend in school did you show gentleness i believe you did okay so we move on straight to what we're learning today which is self-control as i mentioned the fruit of the spirit is self-control as it's written in galatians 5 23. so do you know how to define or how to say what self-control is can you tell me what self-control is okay self-control is saying no to things the bible says are not good for you and yes to what is good for you let me say it again saying no to things that bible say are not good for you and yet to what is good for you because we are born in sin we cannot live lives of second truth without the help of holy spirit so actually it takes holy spirit to help us to live a life of self-control and that's why it's the fruit of the spirit so we'll be studying the life of one bible character i know you love so much i love him so much we call him joseph yes or is your name joseph yeah i have a friend that is joseph okay so today let's look about the bible character called joseph it's an example of a young man who develops self-control through the things that he suffered yes and do you remember his story yes joseph was born by who by jacob and jake and yes so the father of joseph was jacob so who is the father of jacob do you remember again uh isaac and the father of isaac is who abraham so i can say it the other way around that joseph was the son of jacob the grandson of isaac and the great grandson of abraham and joseph has quite a number of siblings you remember yes joseph had 11 siblings before he was born he had 10 siblings and after him another sibling was born yes and joseph was born even when jacob was very old because jacob loved the mother of joseph uh, do you remember the name yes rachel yes and because of that jacob also loved joseph a lot so much so 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 much so much that one day jacob actually bought made this very beautiful cloth yes the cloth of many colors you've heard about it before and actually because of that the older brothers of joseph and even the younger brother all the brothers let's say they were kind of jealous of him that are uh, of all of us how come our dad only bought the nice coat of many colors for jacob for joseph alone rather for joseph alone so now you also remember about joseph we usually call joseph the, the dreamer yes because joseph dreamt a lot and each time he dreamt he 
<laughs> those dream usually put them in trouble. And remember the first dream he had that one day <clears throat> he saw him and his brother putting sheaves of grain together. Yes, yeah, sheaves of grain together, and suddenly his own sheep stood upright while his brother sheaves actually they gather around and they bow before him. And when he told his brother, the brother was like, What do you mean? Do you mean we are going to save you? Are you saying that you're going to rule over us? Which made even his brothers to be more jealous and even eat him more. And he had another dream. That one was actually called the epic of the dream. Say so he dreamt of the sun and the moon, level stand by him down just to him alone. And instead of him just keeping his mouth shut or telling a very responsible elder, maybe like his dad or mother, what did he do? He went straight to tell his brother, putting him in another set of trouble and making his brother to eat him more. And what Joseph again went to tell his father, and his father actually cautioned him not to do that again or not just to talk anyhow. And what happened? Jacob, the father, actually kept thinking about this in his house. So it happened later, later one day. The brothers who were not at home, they've actually gone to keep to turn the father's flock, their father's flock, and you know, flock, yes, the flock of sheep. So, because they have not been known for a while, Jacob called Joseph and said, Okay, go and see if your brother is fine and the flocks are doing well. That's how Joseph went to actually, he was sent to the valley of Hebron and he arrived at the Shechem. He didn't see his brother and asked them, Okay, where are my brothers and the flock? Where can I look? For them and we were told that the man actually told him that okay go further towards a place called Dothan and that area you're going to see your siblings and it was really a long walk you can see where it was coming from yes from Abram down to Bethel Shechem Ogun down to Dothan a very long if you can see it on this map and if it were you would you have turned back and no exercise self-control. But Jacob actually, that's like the beginning of him exercising self-control, going all that way. Then, on getting there, the brother saw him afar off. And because they saw him afar off, they were like, oh, see the dreamer guy is coming. What can we do for him? Let's kill him. And let's see what will become of his dream. Hmm. When actually, they were thinking about that and they were discussing this among themselves. The eldest brother, Reuben, you remember him? He said, no, don't let us do that. We cannot kill our brother. Rather, we shouldn't share the blood. Rather, let's throw him inside the world. Yes. So, what he said, Reuben said this so that he can actually later rescue Joseph because he knows how much the father, Jacob, loved Joseph. But why they, and they went ahead and they, they threw Jacob inside the well, but the well is actually a dry one. So they were eating, enjoying the food. <clears throat> and as they were doing this, they just looked afar and they saw these guys. Uh, they called them Ishmaelites or the Medianites coming. And they were like, okay, rather than us killing our brother Joseph, why not just sell him and just make some quick money on him? Yes, that's what they thought. And that's what he went ahead to do. So they pulled Joseph out of this pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites. For how much? 20 shekels of silver. That would be around 200 dollars. So in Naira, that should be like 30,000 Naira. That's like two boxes of pizza. I'm very sure maybe they use the money to buy something to eat as well. Yes. So when they did this, they now went ahead in their craftiness, removed the coat of many colors from J Joseph, and they killed the goods and pulled the clothes inside the blood. Yes, that's what they did. And with the intention of showing this to their father. So they go home and show this to their father that, oh, father, your favorite son, Joseph, is dead. And the father said, wow, 
he must have been killed by a ferocious animal. So the father cried and the father mourned. And even he went ahead to say, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in grief. And he kept mourning his son. However, the story is not over. Guess what happened? So Joseph was taken to the land of Egypt. Because the Midianites actually sold Joseph in Egypt to one man called Potiphar. And Potiphar happens to be the one of the officials of Pharaoh. Let's call him maybe like a commissioner in the land of Pharaoh, in the land of Egypt, or call him more like a minister. Yes, in the land of Egypt. However, Joseph would not behave like a slave. Rather, he would work hard faithfully until <clears throat> and as a result of his working at God actually blessed Potiphar and Potiphar saw this and because Potiphar was so impressed with what Joseph had done everything in the house of Potiphar apart from his wife was handed over to him that is actually how amazing it happened yes so much that Joseph was learning to become a great leader However, in the house of Potiphar, there was Potiphar's wife, who happened not to be a good woman, who wanted Joseph to be her boyfriend. So it happened one day when everybody was not in the house, Potiphar grabs Joseph's cloth and said, Come to bear with me. No one will know. But as we know, that through the power of Holy Spirit, Joseph could exercise self control. Exercise self control. And flew with, without even taking his clothes. So when Potiphar returned to the house, the wife went ahead and lied. He said, My husband, see Joseph clothes. When everybody wasn't around, he forced me to be his girlfriend. I screamed and he ran off, leaving his clock behind. Potiphar was very angry very livid and he ordered that Joseph should be sent to prison. Mm. Joseph insisted on his innocence but no one would believe him. So because of this, he was in the prison. However, that's not the end of the story. Joseph's story might seem to be going from good then to bad then to worse. His brother first betrayed him Now he has been unfairly in prison and life seemed very unfair. But Joseph knew God was with him. So I need you to wait and actually find out what will happen next week when we are treating the part two. So what did you learn? What did you learn? I learned quite a lot of things. Joseph demonstrated self-control by obeying and serving his master Potiphar faithfully. Self-control kept him from complaining. Self-control also kept him from running away from responsibility. Self-control made him to say no to Joseph Warrior, preferring to obey God and remaining faithful to his master. He showed self-control, even though he was accused wrongfully. So how do we show self-control in our daily life? We show self-control when we obey our parents, rather than giving excuses and disobeying them. When they have us to do that house chores or to do one thing or the other. It takes self-control not to yell at someone who is unkind or say mean things to you. And amazingly, it takes self-control to stay away from too much sugar, chocolate, ice cream, and other processed food. It takes self-control to say no to cheating, lying, and stealing. What other way can you exercise self-control? But remember, self-control is great because it has a lot of benefits. It will protect you from harm, it will keep you from trouble, it will help you to grow your relationship with God. It makes your parent and teacher proud of you and prepares you for leadership. Because as we learned, as we're going to see in the story of Joseph. So how can you develop self-control? Remember, self-control is a fruit of spirit. So you need to have Holy Spirit to help you. We need to run away from sin, things that God don't like, like Joseph did. 
spend your time and energy in other productive activity that will distract you from sin. Rather than doing that thing that is wrong, why don't you spend your time learning a new language, learn to play instrument, or engage in sports? And all this will help you to actually to develop self-control. So what's our memory verse today? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Second Timothy 1 7. For God did not give us spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Shall we say it again? Second Timothy 1 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to learn at your feet. Thank you, Father, because even exercising self-control is a fruit of spirit. Holy Spirit, we pray that you help us to exercise self-control in all things. That we will be the one who do the right thing at the right time. We will not indulge in sin. We will not indulge in things that give us that pleasure, but that is against your word. Thank you, Father, because we know you will help us. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So thank you for joining and see you next week. Bye. Fruit of the Spirit, self-control. So part of God's story is about the fruit of the Spirit. And it goes like this. The Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. They're all good to have, and they all come from God. But for now, let's focus on self-control. When the Bible talks about self-control, it's more than watching what you say and thinking before you act. Self-control is when we trust God to help us know what's good for us and say no to things that aren't. Self-control is a skill God grows in us when we choose to consider Him and others before doing what we think will make us happy. Did you know it takes at least 80 days before watermelon seeds grow from a garden? Like watermelon, self-control takes a long time to grow. It's not something you can learn in one day. Like anything you want to get good at, you need to practice self-control every day. Now, it's not always easy to practice self-control, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can control your thoughts, words, and actions. And Jesus can help you understand how to make better decisions. Even if we know it's always best to show kindness to a friend or sibling, we don't always respond the way we should. The Bible tells us to practice self-control no matter what happens. James 1.19 says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us, God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And in Luke 9.23, Jesus says, Anyone who wants to be my follower must deny themselves, take up their crosses daily, and follow me. Now, when the Bible tells us to practice self-control by being slow to speak and slow to anger, it's not telling us to talk slowly or take our time getting angry. It's saying we shouldn't be so quick to tell others what to do or to blurt something out that might not be true or helpful. That's why we need God to help us control our actions. Self-control may look like not taking the last piece of pizza when you're already full, or letting someone else pick a game during family night, or not lashing out when someone annoys you. Remember, when we think about God and others before doing what will make us happy, we are choosing to be like Jesus, who practiced self-control when he carried out God's plan of dying for our sins. If Jesus hadn't practiced self-control, we would have to die as punishment for the things we do wrong. So when we practice self-control with our family and friends, we are showing God's self-control to others. Practicing self-control is part of what it means to have the fruit of the Spirit. Maybe you can think of an area in your day you need to practice self-control and ask God to help you. And as you experience God and grow in your faith, the Spirit can grow more self-control in your life.